Hi, good morning everybody. Good morning. Ben, where's your flamingo shirt? Oh, uh, I think it accidentally fell into a fire. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, we don't need it now because we have uh, <laughs> yeah. flamingos. So Ben was just telling me about a song that he wrote for his preschool kids. Can you tell us about it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I just, okay, so I wrote a song called What Do You Want and What Do You Need for my uh, grade school kids to teach them wants and needs. We need water, we need a doctor, but we don't need things like chocolate and Coke. <laughs> I think it's real apl applicable for mm -hmm. this time. So can you like sing the chorus? <laughs> oh man, <laughs> maybe another time. Maybe it's on you. It's on YouTube, so you can. Yeah, that's true. You can it's post on YouTube. Link. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, possibly we could do yeah. that. So um, we're 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 gonna start off with prayer, and I wanna before we start with worship, um, as everybody's coming in, you can write in the comments where you're watching from, and you can share, and afterwards um, stay tuned because Garth is gonna be preaching in our series on Romans about love, I believe. So I'm really looking forward to that. So let's just start off with some prayer for this time. So Father, thank you that um, you may not give us everything that we want, but Lord, you give us what you need and you're a good daddy. So Father, as we come to your presence today, I, uh, I pray for anybody here who's feeling lonely, Lord, that, that they would feel at your touch right now. Anybody who's feeling down or depressed, Lord, that the oil of joy will flow over them. Anyone who's sick would be healed. And Father, we ask that you would step in right now and do what only you can do, Father, that as we worship you, that your presence would go beyond any barriers that we've placed for each other or have been others have placed around us. And Lord, we thank you that your spirit knows no bounds, that your spirit is with us wherever we are, and that your spirit binds us all together, even though we're in so many different places and even different countries. So thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Kelsey's prayer this morning. We just want to know your presence intimately this morning. Father, we're so grateful that we can meet together, even though we're not together physically. We are together spiritually. Lord, we pray that you bless this effort to just celebrate who you are. And Lord, although we are all in our separate spaces, we all in one voice will sing this out together. We raise a hallelujah. So sing with me. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. Hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I 
timidly comes before you and says, Father, I, I think I trust you. But we want to come confidently before him and say, Father, I trust you. My hands are open to you. My heart is open to you. My life is open to you to come and shape and to mold. Let us step into what he's doing and say, Father, shape me. Father, mold me. We're all being challenged. Not a single one of us is going through this day not being challenged. Father, we want that challenge because we say yes. We say yes to what you're doing, the transformation you're doing in us, Father. Lord, we want to feel your presence because we know your presence is here. Now we just want to feel it, Father. We want to be a part of it, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Salvation, heroes and conquered 
flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder. Blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Sometimes um, we just it's just good to feel rested and be in your presence, Lord. But let's just turn off our voices for a while and just listen to our Lord, listen to our King. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We encourage you if we're really blessed by you joining us wherever you are. So uh, we would like to encourage you guys to continue the blessings by sharing 
uh, this sermon, this service, uh, on your Facebook, on Instagram, wherever you want to share it, we encourage you to share it. We really appreciate everything. Um, we appreciate you guys showed up and, and just uh, joined in with us this morning. Thank you guys so much. And thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for joining us. I'm filming this in the garden behind our home. Uh, we're under quarantine right now, so there's a lot of neighbors out having barbecues, kids playing. So you hear some of that in the background and probably hear some birds singing. I want to begin this message on Romans 12, 9 through 21 with some of the most powerful words in today's world smartphone, Instagram, uh, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Netflix, HBO, BBC, Fox News, conservative, liberal. In his book, Amusing Ourselves to Death by Neil Postman, he asks the question, what happens when media and politics become forms of entertainment? Recently, I was getting ready for bed and an app on my phone informed me that I had spent three hours and 41 minutes on my phone that day. Now, some of you may say, that's all? But if you think about it, that's about 25% of my waking hours. And I've got a wife and three kids. And what was most of it spent on? Well, it was spent on entertainment and news, primarily about politics. What happens when media and politics becomes a replacement for family and Christian community? A replacement for Jesus? A replacement for real love? In Romans 12, 9 through 11, Paul writes, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. I moved to Prague in 1996 because I knew that there was a church there that had a friendly international community, that they really were a Bible-based church, so they were preaching the word. Uh, I'd met some people there on a previous trip, and at the time I was extremely lonely, and I was in need of some real friends some real love. Imagine, this was a time two years before Google existed. YouTube was only one year old and Facebook was a tiny community only two years old. So I couldn't spend lots of hours looking at those things. This is what a cool phone looked like in 1996. And this is what a lot of phones look like today. Two inch screen? 6.3 inch screen. Uh, basically no RAM, 6 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, camera, 2 megapixels, 48 megapixels. No G, 4G. So I moved to Prague and I wanted some real love. Wasn't going to get it from my phone. And uh, when Paul writes in verse 9 of Romans 12, love must be sincere, he means it needs to be absolutely real, not phony, not hypocritical. He writes, hate what is evil, cling to what is good. When I first went to the church in Prague, um, I smiled a smile, I said the right words, I went to the pizza dinners, I went to, the, to a home group, and I basically did what the faithful are supposed to do but I still felt desperately lonely. I wanted a quick fix. Have you ever felt that way? I wanted something that would fill the empty space inside, and I wanted it immediately. Romans 12.10 says, Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Devoted here means real commitment, like, like a blood relative love through thick and thin, uh, an unbreakable bond, 
and really difficult, you needed to swallow your pride and honor them above yourself. Uh, I don't know about you, but I find that really difficult to do because without question, the favorite thing that I think about each day is me. In Prague in the 1990s, instead of being devoted to the body of Christ, I was devoted to me. I couldn't go home each night and binge watch a series on Netflix because Netflix didn't even exist back then. I didn't honor others, I honored me. Every night except for Sundays and on church home group nights, I went out. And I would stay out until 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Why not? I was free. Who's going to say I couldn't do it? Uh, I'd head for the clubs. And as a reformed alcoholic, uh, I really knew how to drink and I knew how to party. I dated women who didn't know Jesus. And if someone at the church found out, I'd say, well, I was leading the poor woman to the Lord. That was ridiculous. Let me tell you, don't do what they call missionary dating. It's a recipe for spiritual disaster, and it certainly was for me. Romans 12:11 says, Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. When I surrounded myself with the world, I became like the world. Instead of finding true love and friends that I could really count on who loved Jesus, I ended up losing my zeal and my passion for the Lord. I wasn't experiencing what I call breakthrough worship that can really transform your life. I wasn't hearing the voice of the Lord. I wasn't finding Him in service to others. I wasn't doing any service to others. I lost my vision and I lost my purpose for life. And I was trapped in an ungodly relationship. I needed to be rescued. It got so bad, I was afraid to go home to my apartment at night uh, because what if my girlfriend came knocking? What if my party friends came? And they, I opened the door and they said, hey, we got everything we need, let's party or come with us. We're gonna spend the night on the town. I knew I didn't have the strength to say no and I would just give in. And it was at that time that my pastors, John and Kelsey Mullen, rescued me. They basically said to me, uh, come to our home, stay here as long as you need to, whatever it takes, you need to break free. And that's exactly what I did. And I, I thank them to this day because it altered the course of my life. What you focus on in your life becomes a part of you. If you focus on social media, news, and endless entertainment, and you spend much of your relationship time with people who don't call Jesus Lord, you will lose your first love for Him. When you're in that condition, you won't hear His voice of guidance. You won't know true joy. You will not be a servant of Jesus Christ. You may have salvation, but is that all you want in your Christian life? Romans 12.12 12 says, Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Who is our hope that brings joy? It's Jesus. Who gives you patience when you're going through a difficult season in life? It's Jesus. Who is the only one who can give you the power and compassion to be faithful in prayer. It's Jesus. Who personally modeled hope and patience and affliction and faithfulness in prayer? It was Jesus. His own life showed us the way. Romans 12, 13 through 16 says, Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. These verses are about people that we're in relationship with in the body of Christ. And in the church that I'm a part of, we have all kinds of people. We've got uh, people that the world calls successful. We've got people with high education. 
people who own their own great business. We also have people who have very little education, people who are unemployed, people who are actually homeless. Now, we have people who seem to always be joyful. Uh, that can be a little irritating. They're always smiling. They always seem up. Kind of makes me wonder if they're really like that when they're not at church. But we have those kind of people. And then we have people who seem to always be grumbling about something. We got all kinds, and they come from many nations. Paul is trying to tell us that this melting pot will only work if we share, if we're hospitable, if we bless, we rejoice, we mourn with those who mourn, we live in harmony, we're humble. You know, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. None of us is in a position to feel better or above anyone else. Romans 12, 17 through 21 says, Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. One story that I can share about a feeling for a need for revenge. Well, I work for an American company. I've worked for them for 16 years here in Europe. And one of the markets that I'm responsible for leading in is Slovenia. And I noticed that the business in Slovenia was going down uh, step by step and I needed to do something. So I let the people know there, the leaders, I'm going to fly into Ljubljana and have a meeting with you and let's find out what's going on. So I arrive in, in Ljubljana, Slovenia and I go to the hotel where the conference is for the meeting and before I can go into the meeting, uh, one of my leaders comes up to me and says, uh, you don't want to go in there. I said, well, of course I do, that's why I came, I, I want to go and talk to them. He said, no, you don't want to go in there because some of the people here, some of the leaders here, have kind of taken over. And they're telling people that you should not be listened to, your system will not work, you cannot be trusted. Uh, and they basically said they want to have nothing to do with you and they've convinced the team to pretty much feel the same. Well, naturally, I barged into the room anyway. And when I stepped in, it got completely quiet. So I, I spoke, I asked for their opinion, their thoughts. Nobody had anything to share. And I left knowing it was true. Some people who were leaders there, a couple who I considered to be friends. I'd had lunches and dinners in their home. I'd been out many times with them. Uh, you know, I thought, these are my friends. Uh, they're always welcoming to me. They meet me at the airport usually. It's great. But now I realize they had become my enemies. And behind my back, they were stabbing me in the back and saying a lot of terrible things about me. And eventually what happened is they left the company and they took most of that team with them, devastating my income and my business in that area. Well, the desire was to have revenge, but there wasn't really anything that I could do. But I could harbor in my heart for a very long time terrible feelings toward these people. It took years for me to let go. And during those years, I have to admit, I did something really terrible. I gossiped about them. I talked to leaders in my company at corporate headquarters in America, people in Canada, people as I traveled around, I used them as examples. I guess it was my form of trying to get revenge. But in reality, I was kind of a, kind of a prisoner to that uh, hurt that I had inside. I needed to let it go and give it over to the Lord and trust that He would take care of it, He would take care of them, so that I could be free and go on with my life. Do you have anybody like that in your life right now that you need to let go of, you need to 
get that freedom that you find in Jesus, you know, he's the one who judges, not us. We're the ones who are supposed to love like he did, unconditionally and with forgiveness. Have you ever had this experience? You're walking down the street and you see someone who's homeless and they got their hand out or somebody who's a beggar who even comes and approaches you and is kind of aggressive and you avoid eye contact and you think, I don't have time for this. I have an extremely busy schedule and I'm certainly not going to give them any money because I'd just be enabling them. What are they going to do with the money? They're just going to spend it on alcohol or cigarettes or drugs. Um, I, I need to be somebody who helps them be free of this. So I'm just going to block them out of their mind. I'm not going to help them in any way. And besides, why don't these people just get a job and provide for themselves? If you've never thought those thoughts, I commend you. Sadly, I've thought them many times. I wonder how many people God has prepared to receive the good news of Jesus. And he's put these people in my path and I just walked right on by. I really don't want to think about it. I, it's, I've been doing this for a lot of years and that's a lot of people, but I do want to change. I've figured out with my limited thinking that if I spend all my time with people who are saved, people who know Jesus, I probably won't lead anyone to a relationship with Jesus Christ. He finished this ministry on earth with the command to go into all the nations, all the world, and share the good news and disciple people to follow him. Maybe one of the things that hinders us from sharing Jesus is that we know to be like him is that his footsteps lead to the cross. We don't want to share the bad news. But think about this. He had to go there for you. He had to hang on the cross to take your sins so you could be free. On the other side of the cross is the resurrection. It's freedom from fear about your future and eternal life. It's freedom from fear about being judged and instead knowing that you're received, you're embraced, you're loved by Jesus.